lot of times people ask, okay, I want to do the business. I understand the power of these products. I like the compensation plan. Now, what do I do to get started? How do I do it? And I want to teach you here a simple system that is working the world over. And the fastest growing groups are those groups that are mastering this system. It's a simple system, and some of the elements of a simple system, remember, we're trying to duplicate. We're trying to create duplication. If you remember, um, if you remember from the compensation plan, we talked about building bees, and, and you get five bees who go out there, and they develop five bees who develop five bees. That's duplication. And in order to have effective duplication, you need a system that's easy to learn, a system that's easy to do, and a system that's easy to teach. Now remember, duplication starts from the very first time you contact somebody, from the very first thing that you do when, with your new people, your customers, a potential business builder. They are learning from that very beginning. If it seems like you sell them the products and you're a salesman, then they think, oh, this, in order for me to do the business, I have to become a salesman. And sometimes people can get so good at what they do, they become a professional that other people can't duplicate. And it actually slows down their growth. And remember, if you remember from the manual, we talk about you don't have to be the expert if you know the expert. You don't have to be the master, you just have to know the master. Well, this is a system that you can get good at that emphasizes those same principles. Again, it's easy to learn, easy to do, easy to teach. And we call it the ABC system. It's as simple as ABC. Here's how it works. A, B, C. A stands for the advisor. B stands for the bridge. And C stands for the customer, client, or contact. Okay. Whoever it is that you're going to be approaching. Now, when you start out in this business, you actually probably start out as a C. Somebody contacted you, somebody approached you. You tried the products, you listened to the business, you say, you know, I want to get involved. Now you're watching this video because you now are ready to take your first step as a B. And this is where the business starts. If you remember in our diagrams, we use B for business builder. You're starting as a bridge because that's the basics for the business builder. Again, this is the basics for network marketing and how you're going to do that, how you're going to build your business. B contact C. Where do you get your C's from? Well, we encourage you in the uh, training manual and on this DVD, we've told you about making a list, about sitting down and writing down the names of people that you want to work with or people that you think would be interested in this, people that you want to share these products and this opportunity with. Those are your C's. So how do you do it? You first contact them. You tell them that you have something that you want to talk with them about. Or more than that, I often say, I have someone... I have someone I want you to meet. So in making a contact here, here's one of the most effective contacts that I've seen. And there are lots of ways to contact people, but I like this approach. I have someone I want you to meet. Who is it that you're trying to introduce? You're going to be introducing your advisor. Okay? So be contact C and say, I have someone I want you to meet. Or maybe it's that recently I was talking with a friend, my A, and I told him about you and he wants to meet you or she wants to meet you. So maybe it's the A wants to meet them, but that's the approach. And then you bring, B brings C to meet A. So let's go over this again. This is the basics of network marketing. You make your list, you take those people become your C's. You contact a C and you bring C to meet A. A presents to C. So A does the presentation, and that's the beauty of it. You don't have to learn the presentation in order to be effective in this business. You don't have to learn it to get started. You have to become a bridge. See, your greatest asset when you get started in this business is your relationship with those people on your list. You've got the relationship here. Other people will have more experience in presenting the business, more experience in explaining the products. They'll, they might have more success than you do. Obviously, everybody starts off from the very beginning at the very, well, some people call it the bottom, but you start from zero. And you might not have all of the experience that you would like when you present to other people, but you don't need to. And in fact, it's actually better if you don't try to. You can let someone else be your advisor. Here's your goal. If you're an effective bee 
You create the atmosphere. You create the excitement that C has when they sit down to listen with A. And so here's your, your goal is C should be sitting on the edge of his or her seat waiting to hear what A has to say. When you bring C to meet A, it's not something that's deceptive. It's not where you say, well, come over. Come over for a bite to eat. And they get there, and not only do they have donuts, they have a flip chart presentation with it. It's not something like that. It's upfront. It's honest. You treat people with integrity, but you build some excitement here. So C should be sitting on the edge of your seat or his seat, waiting to hear what A has to say. If you can create that kind of environment, you're effectively what we call teeing up. Teeing up A. Um, if you remember in golf, if you've ever teed off in golf, there's a tee, something that you put the golf ball on. And by having the golf ball on a tee, it's raised up out of the ground. It's easier to hit, and it's easier to hit it further. That's teeing up. It's building up an excitement in C, so they're more and more interested in what A has to say. Okay? Now, some people do the opposite. They do a teeing down. You can do it in a way, it's almost like taking the golf ball and smashing it into the ground or throwing it into a sandpit and then trying to hit the ball. It's much harder to do. So the B actually has the greatest responsibility for building that atmosphere. And that's why the B is, stands for bridge. Okay? How is it that you do that? Well, there are two things. And the first one is very simple. It's just that whenever you're contacting the C, if you're a bridge and you're contacting C, you're just going to say things that show your respect for A. So let's write that word down, respect. You can say, I have someone that I'd like you to meet that I really admire, or somebody that I have a lot of respect for, or somebody that's been very successful in business, or someone that's an entrepreneur that's a real great guy. Anything you want to do, just a, a couple of sentences here. You don't want to overkill. You can pull that T so far up out of the ground that the ball actually falls over. You don't want to do that. It's just a couple of sentences, but that's only the beginning. People say, well, in a couple of sentences, how excited can they get? And the answer is they can't get very excited. Okay? Why are we only doing a couple of sentences? If you come back to here, remember the presentation doesn't happen until A gets there. A is doing the presentation, so over the phone you're not. You're just doing the invitation as a B. Now the real key, though, to this respect is not just what you say when you contact the person. The real key is right here. When you bring them to meet A, it's the respect that you show A. I'll give you a couple of examples to see if you can kind of envision what I mean. I have had two times that uh, I've had people introduce me uh, to someone else. They asked me to be the A. And one, I, w I traveled for three hours to meet with this person and their group. They had six people in the room. And uh, this gentleman stood up in front of the room and says, you know what, I really don't know how to sell this stuff. And so I've asked Blake to come up here so he can sell it to you. Not the most effective introduction I've ever had. These people are, you know, they sat back in their seat. They said, OK, this guy's going to try to sell me something. Very, very different. I had another time. Uh, a second example where it was the exact opposite. I get down there to meet the people, and uh, as soon as I get to the place, the, uh, the person was already there meeting with their C. The B was already sitting down at the table with their C, and they stood up, and they came to the door, and they greeted me at the door. They walked me over back to the table, and they said, oh, thank you so much. This is in front of their C, and they make sure it's in front of their C. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to come down here and we meet with us. We really appreciate your time. And uh, he introduced me. We exchanged business cards. We sat down. And this person was ready to hear, because of the respect, this white glove treatment, the red carpet treatment that B had shown towards me, C is sitting there. And he didn't know me from Adam before we started. You know, he had heard a couple of sentences before. But when I get there, and uh, B shows me such great respect, he says, wow, if this guy's that important, maybe I should listen to what he has to say. So more than that, it's the attitude. It's the respect that you show at the meeting. And we'll teach you some, some uh, techniques or maybe some principles of things you can do there to make it more effective in showing your respect. Let's talk about where people should sit. You've brought, you, B has brought C to meet A. Okay? So you're there, you're meeting. And ideally, when you first get there, B and C arrive first. B is in charge of the setup. He's in charge of the setting, make sure, making sure the atmosphere is right. So B will put C... So his back is to any distractions. You know, if there's a, a, a cute waitress walking by, it should happen behind C. 
If it's a busy doorway where people are coming back and forth, it should happen behind C. You want to remove all distractions, so put C to where they have their back to the distractions. A, you are going to position directly across from C. Now, the question is, where does B sit? Some people think B would sit here. They call it a two-on-one presentation. That's not the way it works. Remember, you have a relationship with C, so your job is two things. Not only do you want to get C to be on the edge of their seat waiting to, waiting to listen to what A has to say. That's not the only thing you want to do. You want to make B, uh, uh, as a B, you want to make C feel comfortable. So as a B, you're going to sit right here. It's one on two presentation. You're sitting next to the C. Okay, let's look at what you say when you first bring them in. Let's say for A, you're going to use Andy. Andy is your A. You bring Andy in and you say, you know, Andy, I know you're busy and I really appreciate your time and coming out here and uh, sharing this information with us. This is my good friend Carl. Carl is your C. Here's my good friend Carl. And uh, he and I have been friends for a long time and I really wanted him to meet with you. Thank you so much. And then you turn to Carl and say, Carl, this is Andy who I was telling you about. He's, been very, he's a very successful entrepreneur. And, uh, you know, I've listened to him, and I liked what he had to say so much that I really wanted you to hear it, too. That's the kind of introduction, and you sit down. And then you turn the meeting over to A, and A does the presentation. Now, remember, as a B, you can be brand new at this. And you don't have to give the presentation because you have somebody there, an advisor, an expert. Andy is there to do it for you. And after Andy does the presentation, at the very end of the presentation, Andy will ask you, you know, to share your experience. And you can say, you know, I've tried the Rebound. I love it. I love these products. Um, they've made a difference in, in my life. I'm already seeing an increased energy. And I think this is just great. And that's what you do. You don't have to give the, give the presentation. You just give your story. Let's move on to the next step. The next step is A presents to C. Now, when A is sitting there across the table presenting to C, remember, you're the B in this one. What are you doing as a B? Number one, you're paying attention. You should be listening to this almost like it's your first time hearing it. You can have a notepad out taking notes because you're so interested in what he has to say. If you are sitting on the edge of your seat, that encourages C, Carl, to be sitting on the edge of his seat as well, listening to what A, Andy, has to say. So that's very important, how much you pay attention. Here's a few things not to do. You shouldn't be talking on a cell phone at that same time. You shouldn't introduce the two people and leave, if you can at all help it. And uh, you definitely shouldn't be distracted. You shouldn't be bored. You shouldn't say anything like, oh, you know, I've heard this 10 times already. You're the one that needs to hear it. I'm just going to leave. None of that. You need to be paying attention, just like it's your first time. You're sitting on the edge of your seat, which encourages Carl, your C, to do the same. That's what happens as A presents to C. Something else to remember here, if you need any forms, if you need any samples, anything that I'm going to consider a consumable item, something you're going to give away, that is something that B prepares. Don't expect Andy, don't expect your advisor to come with all of the sign-up forms. Don't, the, don't expect them to be paying for all those samples. It's your business, you're the one that's going to be earning quick start on this sign-up, so you're the one that's responsible as a B to have those ready, okay? particularly samples and sign-up forms, applications, any handout materials you want to give. And you might want to counsel with A ahead of time to let him know a little bit about who this C is and to see what materials he might suggest that you bring. Okay? That's Again, that's B's responsibility. And that happens here at the presentation. So during the presentation, Andy, A might say to you, OK, Bob, do you have, do you have a sign-up form there? Do you have a sample of the product? And that's your responsibility to have it there. And at the end of that, B tells his experience. After A's done their presentation, B just says, you know what? He, it's almost like he bears testimony. He says, you know what? I really like these products. I've tried them. I've been on them for the last three days, and already I feel an increase in my energy, or, or my skin's getting better, or you know how I used to have those aching knees? Well, that's starting to go away, or any of that. B tells his experience here. And it's kind of like he bears testimony, uses his experience to reiterate the things that A just said. Now, you don't have to repeat them. You're not giving the presentation. You're not doing a summary. You're letting A do that. You just share your experience. Then at the end of that, you excuse A. You actually stand up and you say, you know, Andy, I know you're busy. I know you've got a lot on your plate. We really thank you for your time. Thank you for coming there. And walk him to the door. Let him leave. And then you go back and sit down with, with Carl.